Now today's little adventure we're going to try to uh, do a little maintenance and change a tire on the GS but but I'm going to try some things I never tried before. Now usually at the end of a day like this I learned something and today was no exception. Now what I always tried to do is each time I do it I try something just a little bit different. In this case what we're trying to do here and we're, we're trying to be real careful about it we're trying to avoid scratching the rims if at all possible. The criteria here is not to scratch the rims. We Both Glenn and I have put a lot of time and energy into these rims. Now, so the first step on not scratching the rims is going to be on the the lift and of course this this clamp trolley's already upgraded his. I haven't upgraded yet but I've been thinking about putting little pieces of rubber in there and then I thought, well, okay, just for today to get through here, maybe this will be just as good, is to put a towel in there. That's why it doesn't, again, scratch the rim. I've seen a lot of people that have put a bike up on a, a lift like this, tightened up the thing, and then moved the bike without loosening it and put a nice big gouge in what amounts to be a beautiful rim. Now, the problem with everything that we do is, I don't like to, if, if we had a race bike, a dirt bike, and we didn't care about scratching it, beating it up, hitting it with hammers, well, but I'm trying to treat these machines as delicately as I can. Now, another thing is by strapping them in and having this, this by the way worked perfect, having the straps on, and I also like to put the come along on, this lifts the whole back of the bike up. And while I'm doing the maintenance, first thing I thought of, well, I may as well change the air filter too. And then I realized I don't have an air filter. So what I did, and I looked back at how many miles, this air filter's got less than 10,000 miles. And so what I did, pull the side covers off, pull the air filter out, clean it with compressed air. And I realized it wasn't really that dirty, except for one, one poor bee. There was, look at this guy, whatever he is or was a bee. And this poor guy, about the last thing he said is, What's that noise? Well, yeah, and every time you clean this, and what's important is to clean it with the air from inside to the outside. You don't want to blow the stuff into the air filter. So, but just by cleaning this out, and I guess this really wasn't bad, and it's got less than 10,000 miles, but I do have to pick up a couple more air filters. And of course, I always keep track of all the maintenance. I keep track of the time, the date, when I change tires, when I change oil. I've got a log book, a pretty much an accurate one too. And the most important thing, I have the service manual for every bike I have, even the track bike. So it always helps me in figuring out. An example is today, the, the manual for the Suzuki says you can go 15,000. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, certainly you can go 10, that's for sure, with an air filter. Now one of the tools that I've used, and I've gotten my money's worth, this is this costs about 20 bucks in Harbor Freight, and it, the, the joke is, you have a coupon, it winds up costing $15. It hangs from the 2x12 beams that are in the garage, and you can pick a whole motorcycle up, but obviously in this place we just want to pick the back up. Now what it is, it's a safety thing too. If the bike, if somebody were to walk in or something happened, the bike can't literally fall on you if you're crawling under it, or in this case, we're gonna be pulling on a wheel. And I can get the back end up off the ground. I just need to get it up maybe an inch or so. And in this case, an inch is fine. Now, the, the, the trouble with a GS is, anybody that's ever had a GS, and I know Andy Lee's had one and Tim's had one, Getting the back wheel off is really a pain in the neck. It All the clearances are tight, and what it is when you have really nice rims that you don't want to scratch, the, the answer is to get all the brake parts off, get all the little hoses and everything that go anywhere near it, and of course the chain out of the way before you start doing anything. Now, and even when this bike had anodized rims, when you, were when you were doing a tire change, you could very easily scratch this if you didn't pull everything apart. So the nice thing is I've, de I've taken a day that it's basically raining out, and I'm not in any rush here, so I can take my time and do this comfortably. Another thing that on a GS, anybody that's had one knows, there's a cotter pin in the brake bolt that's really a pain to get to, but of course it's a safety thing. And once you get that cotter pin out, that everything else is pretty much ready to go. 
Now, another thing I've heard and I believe in is not to use a cotter pin over and over and over again. So at Harbor Freight, they sell a box of cotter pins for about $4, I think. Oh, we don't have to reuse these over and over again. Now, like I said, getting this break oh, out of the way so when we pull this back, we don't start running into things or trying to avoid scratching things. And we found that out with Glenn's front wheel that getting these off the bike, getting them out of the way is a real important thing. And again, if you just had ordinary rims and you didn't care about scratching them, well, it wouldn't really be a big deal. So, of course, this is just the rest of the hardware that has to come off. The chain has to be pulled out of the way. Once I got this apart, before I put it back together, I'll get all the rust off with a wire brush. And again, the way a GS comes apart, it comes apart with the axle still in the wheel. The back of the swing arm comes apart. Kind of a nice way to do it. You don't have to disturb the exhaust system. The, the only thing can be a kind of a nuisance is if you're on a short chain, if you've just put the chain in and the axle is as far forward as it'll go, it's difficult to get the chain off. But again, our chain is probably in the middle of its life. It's got about 5,000 miles on it already, so we're not worrying about that. Now, one of the things I believe in doing, and, and I encourage everybody to do it, I've asked Glenn, even if he enjoys doing it too, is whenever we take something apart, we try to get the parts as clean, rust-free, grease-free as possible. Even not for a cosmetic reason, just that it's easier to work on the bike. And in the future, it's just more enjoyable to work on a bike that isn't an inch thick of grease and whether you're changing a countershaft sprocket or and I know Lauren did this when she did her Ducati chain once you clean it up it's it's a lot more fun to work on it and sure you can always go to a dealer and you can always go and just you know pay him there's some people even take the bike and let the dealer pull the wheels but they don't clean anything if they do it they do the minimum minimum I'm sure if they do anything and now, the thing I wanted to try today, and I didn't have any real high hopes about this, normally what I would always do is anytime I have painted rims, I go get a hacksaw and a Dremel tool and cut the tire off. And I can do that in about five minutes. It's not a big deal. But I wanted to try something that I thought might work. And so last time I was at Harbor Freight, I bought a bunch of these really big zip ties. And here's the whole thing. I, got, I can pull the axle out lay the axle out with the spacers all in place. You can see how cruddy everything gets in here because you really can't get a rag in there and even clean it. But just to lay the parts out, we're going to polish all these up before we put them back. And since we change a tire about once a year, maybe every year and a half, when I have this apart, I try to get it as rust-free, clean, polished as I possibly can. And having these pictures, if I forget, which of course at my age I forget everything, if I forget and I put this spacer on this side or on some bikes, the spacers all look alike, but they're just a little bit different. Well, it's it's handy to have this picture even. It's always good to take pictures as you take something apart. Now, the next step, and you can see what I'm doing. I'm working on an old rug. I always like to work on an old one of these old rugs. By the way, the thing with these rugs, and you can buy them in Lowe's or Home Depot, they're made for factory work. They're rubber-backed. So if you spill oil, it doesn't go down into the other side of, of your good rug. And not that anybody would care if you don't have carpeting in your garage, but I like having a carpeting. And, of course, the trick here is got to let the air out of the tire with my little tool. Again, it's a harbor for everything is harbor freight. Who can afford real tools? And good old Dawn makes the job a little bit easier. Now, I do have a bead breaker, but I wanted to try this to see if I could do break the bead the old school way, just by walking on it. And what I do is just let that, that dawn set up in there for a minute or two. Get up on and just start walking around the tire. By the way, it's a good, you always get soap on your shoes. It's always good if you have a second person who can, you can hold this way. Or luckily, if you get two people to do it, it's a guaranteed it'll work. But again, I try to do everything with one person. And if I have a second person available, that's handy. But uh, it, you don't always have somebody. Now, when you're, you're just knocking on a door of 200 pounds, usually you can break that bead easily. Or again, I do have a bead breaker that I bought at Harbor Freight for $15 or $18. So if all else failed, I could have done it that way. 
Now, the, the experiment that I wanted to try, and I didn't really know if this was going to work. See, my first thought was, and I know the Gorilla Tape worked fine in the past, I wanted to know if, if zip ties would work. If a zip tie could be just as effective. So I bought at, at Harbor Freight a bunch of these giant zip ties, heavy duty zip ties. And I thought, well, if this doesn't work exactly as planned, it'll certainly make it a lot easier. Now what Luciano has that's real good is it's called a dog bone. It holds the tire in the inner groove so that when you're taking the tire off, you don't have to you don't have to knock yourself silly. Well, I don't have a dog bone. And of course if I wanted to, you could always go up to Luciano's, he would always do this, but I like to be able to do this in my own garage just because I like to do this kind of work. And by the way, while I was right about at this point here, my neighbor came in. He had an accident with his PT Cruiser, and he wants me to do the body work, so maybe I can get him to pay for the next tire or something. We'll see. Anyway, these zip ties really worked out cool. Now, I looked, the garage was about 65 degrees today. When I did this originally on, on Glenn's bike, by putting the tires out in the sun, they got up to about 130 degrees. And I think even more than that, if we left it out there. So what happens when a tire is cold, it gets very stiff and hard to work. So that kind of discouraged me, and I said, mm, maybe this isn't going to work exactly the way I want it to. But I do have a feeling, if this was a blazing hot sunny day, and I could have put the tire outside in the sun, I think this would have worked, because it, it worked so close to working that I, I could see daylight. See, when I was done with this, and I even tried using a heat gun, which, mm, it made it better, but it didn't make it like having a tire out in the sun. You let the tire sit out in the sun for an hour, and, and it comes up way over 100 degrees. So anyway, but I did want to try it. And the point is, if you don't try these things, you never really know. It, I never would have known the other change in Glenn's tires unless I gave it a try. So then I really was getting, I said, ah, oh, this is so close, and, and it was so close, but no cigar. So I went and put a couple extra zip ties on, figuring these are cheap anyway. Tightened up the zip ties, and now this is really, really funny. It got so close, but I was getting tired, and again, I can't really, here's the problem. When I'm by myself here, and I'm kneeling down, and I'm pulling on a tire, the problem is that I have two bad shoulders. I've had two torn rotators. And I can do, I can pull on something hard enough that I can hurt myself. I know that. I've done it. I've lifted heavy furniture and moved things and, you know, help pick bikes up or whatever. But, but I know I can hurt myself. And I didn't, I know Glenn will be around the next time we do this and we'll try again. But I did learn the thing I learned from this. The more zip ties you put on this, the better it got. So the, the trick is next time I'm at Harbor Freight, I'll buy a hundred of these zip ties. And they're cheap. It won't even matter. But what happened is Karen had things she wanted to do today, so I figured, let's just do this old school, get out the hacksaw, and if you could believe it, this is, when you put the zip ties on, you get so close, you can get it started even. But then you'd really need to do a tire tool, and then if you're doing tire tools, uh, you're going to scratch the paint. It's almost anything you, tire tool you put on paint, you wreck it. Or even anodizing, it scratches the hell out of it. I know... There's nothing you can do about that. That's just it. But if you take a hacksaw to a tire, what will happen, you can cut it right down. And what's best is stick some kind of piece of wood or nylon or something right under here. So if the saw happens to just touch it, it doesn't nick the rim. Well, and with these zip ties on, the tire comes up so high, you can almost put something a half inch wide in here. And because you have to get in and there's a cord or there's a steel belt around the rim, you have to cut with a Dremel tool or some other way, but this I'm sure. Now, the thing I'm sure of, and I really, I'm dying to try this, is I, I need to make a little box that I can put the tires in and pre-warm them. Now, that's, and then I would avoid having to cut them. I've cut them off the RD, I've cut them off the GS in the past, and it's really not a big deal. They, it's a five minute thing to cut them off, and a couple of Dremel bits to cut the, the, the bead, and that's the end of it. And so, the thing is, and, and I'm sure you could use uh, any other method that you could get it off. The thing I didn't want to do, and I was tempted to do it today, 
because I didn't have a way of really heating this. And I was thinking, how can I heat the tire, get it up over 100 degrees? And I was thinking, I'll go get a heat lamp. I tried the heat gun. Nothing really was working the way it should. Nothing beats doing putting it out in the sun on a hot day. So I just think, well, let me try it anyway. And I, I knew this was going to be a, a real bear to get on, the Gorilla Tape. And I thought, well, you know what, maybe I'll even try is putting more than four. We did four on Glenn's tire, if I remember right. And the idea is to pinch the bead in the middle, to put the two sides down. Now, what I realized, and I realized this halfway through doing this, that the wider the rim is, the better this works. On a narrow rim, like a front rim, two and a half or a three inch rim, and I remember Glenn's bike, it was difficult doing the front wheel. But the back one fell on. You, you could do the back one with one hand. Well, on these narrow rims, these are old school rims. And the fact that this is this tire is about 65 degrees ambient, it made this so difficult. And I, I you probably uh, I shouldn't complain, but by the time I was done and I had gotten the tire to go on, I was huffing and puffing like the little the big bad wolf came to the door. So, and, but of course it obviously went on at some point in time. You just, you just force it on and that's the end of it. And But I really was hoping, and I know the trick is going to be, the narrower the rim is, what I learned, and it's important to learn this stuff, the narrower the rim is, the more difficult it's going to be. Now at this point in time I thought, oh, geez, Chuck left this great tool here. I could have used it today. But I don't know what I was thinking. I forgot all about it. I, I should have given it a try. And Chuck, my apologies, I still have the tool here. But um, And of course, in the worst of all worlds, we could jump in a car and go up to Luciano's but and use a tire machine. But again, I still like to have everything I do in-house, if possible. So by by really toughing this out, and I re you don't see it here. I'm glad it's not on video. I was huffing and puffing and sweating and... Tsh I was thinking, what a way, I'll probably have a heart attack out in the garage here, but if that tire is cold, even with the duct tape, it's difficult to get on. When the tire is hot, it seems like it's the best of all worlds. Now, the best of all worlds would be if you could heat the tire and make the leave the rim out in a freezing cold garage, put the tire in a tire heating box, and all you'd have to do is make it out of styrofoam with that silver foil on one side, probably 10 bucks a sheet in Lowe's, I'll have to check that out and put a light bulb in it. That's how we used to cure some of the carbon fiber stuff. But anyway, that's that's our next experiment, and we'll, we're obviously going to be changing tires for a lot of years. So anyway, what I learned, you know, it was it was worth doing this just to give it a try. But I know in the future, got to get the tire hotter. That's the big the big thing is to get the tire hot. I put in the air; it seated the bead. Totally normal. Went, did the normal balancing routine, nothing changes here. Then I really wanted to, now one of the things this bike, and it happens about every 10,000 miles, these bolts that hold the cush drive, they're in with these little clips. And what happens, even though the bolts are clipped, I think what happens, they beat themselves to death after about 10,000 miles. So what I usually do is every time I change a tire, and it's usually about every second time I change a tire, and I always make a note of when I had to tighten them, they'll get socked down a little tighter. Now what I don't like is when you roll off the gas, there's that play in there, and you can I can feel it anyway. Now maybe maybe if you're uh, you, know, you know you're immune to stuff like that, but so what I wanted to do is tighten up all those bolts, and they were all loose even with the clip, but, but what I know happens is because this cush drive does take up a lot of the shock, and I think the bolts just beat themselves to death a little bit. And I didn't want to red lock tighten because if I ever have to change the sprocket, that's going to be a pain in the ass. But it's a good idea about every two times you change a tire to just peel these back, put a nice big half inch wrench on them, and put about 90 pounds of torque on them. So once that's done and here you can see I still have the things peeled back, I wanted to clean off the grease with a wire brush, clean this up as much as I could using kerosene parts cleaner, get it as clean as humanly possible.
All of the spacers need to be wire brushed on a drill press, run on a buffing wheel. Now, you know, no dealer is going to do this, that's for sure. I don't care, unless you probably pay $300 to change a tire. I don't know. I don't even know what dealers charge to change a tire. It's, it could be more. I don't know. I wonder if you bring a bike to a dealer, good question, and, you, and, you, and the wheels are on the bike and you say put two new Michelin tires on, I'll bet you don't get out of there. Well, I'm not even going to speculate. And, they, and your back rim is not going to be as clean. Your sprocket's not going to be as clean as that. It was something Glenn made good note of. So even this little bit of rust, it's all cosmetic. These parts are going to be fine if you let them rust shut. But how much nicer to work on a bike, and five minutes later they look brand new. And how nice it is when you have the whole sprocket put back together, and everything is nice and clean. And in, in this case, once the wheel is in place, and everything is just hand tight, then I like to put the caliper on, put that cotter pin back in, lock tight all of the appropriate bolts, especially the ones holding the caliper on. And of course adjust the chain. Now, the nice thing is once everything is clean and neat and you're up on a lift, it gets to be a pleasure to work on a motorcycle. And while in there I checked all the fluids and checked I already did the air filter. Check that none of the wires look corroded. None of the things are rubbing on the frame. And I try to every time I have the, the side covers off. Clean everything up here. Take the air gun. Blow out even any dust that's in there. Now, in this case, having this thing up on a lift made it real easy. I said, as long as it's up here, I may as well do a real good cleanup. And there was a lot of stuff that while it's up on a lift like this, I can get out a lot easier than when it's on the ground. So once it's all back together, and this is so, so nice, when everything is back together, you know, this is so nice. You got a new back tire on, probably going to last four or 5,000 miles, maybe a little less if we get, uh, if we start riding with Jose again. And there's a very funny story with Jose. I'll let him tell it, though. I'm not going to tell it. But anyway, and, uh, while I had it up, I did a real nice job cleaning up the engine, getting inside, and with the uh, well, little wire brushes and little polishing tools that I have to get in there. But it just makes working on a bike that much more fun, that much more enjoyable. Now, and the biggest thing of all for me is that everything that happened here, I can do alone. I don't need to bother Karen. I don't need to disturb one of my friends, have them come over for a day. Everything here can be done in my garage in a very reasonable amount of time too. Now, but when we do have two people available in the future, I know that the trick, the biggest trick of all is gonna to be to heat that tire up. Getting that tire hot is the whole, I think the tire actually probably grows an amount you could measure. But what it really does, it makes it so flexible that you can put it on barehanded. And, and you could look at the video we already put up on YouTube that has that, in real time and when you have seven motorcycles believe me there's always something to work on there's always a bike that needs a tire there's always a bike that needs the battery charged there's, there's always one that burned out a bulb in the blinkers there's always something but like having a harem I guess well not exactly the same maybe better though but anyway we did learn something today